In this video I'm going to talk about section views. This is coming from chapter 8 of the textbook. Section views are technical drawings that reveal interior features of an object that are not clearly represented by hidden lines. Section lines are used in almost every engineering discipline. And don't worry, I'm not going to read this whole thing. So here's an example of a section view uh, of a mechanical part. And this part has uh, five holes in it, all different types. And if we imagine that we could cut through the center of that and pull the halves apart, we could see what's going on on the interior of those parts, uh, interior of this part, and it, those wouldn't be hidden lines. So that's what I've created down here. I have a front view showing the circular view of all of those holes, and then I created a top view as a section. And so all of the lines that you would expect that would be hidden are now visible because this line right here, this dash line with the arrows, represents where I'm cutting through the part. I'm removing the top half of the part, and I'm looking down on the part in the direction of the arrows. I'm always behind the cutting plane line looking in the direction of the arrows. So now we can see what we have is called a countersunk hole, a counterboard hole, a drilled hole, a hole that's drilled to depth, and what's called a spot-faced hole. Here's an example of an architectural section. And this is actually a wall section. You can see the roof coming down. You can see the wall. This outside uh, art that you see right here represents a brick layer. This is actually insulation, that honeycomb pattern that's on the inside. Down here, we see the concrete foundation. And then this pattern down in here represents the earth. So here's a problem often faced by mechanical drafters. You start to draw your views, and you draw a front, a side, and a top view. And as you draw it, you start to realize you have a bunch of interior feature. And that interior feature is represented with hidden lines. And the question that a drafter has to ask themselves is, how am I going to dimension all this interior feature if I can't dimension to hidden lines? Well, the answer is to create a full section view that shows the features as hidden lines. So I'm going to go back the same drawing. Here's my left side view. Here's my front view. But I'm going to add a cutting plane line across this and put those arrows in there. And that tells the viewer that this view here is what we would see if we were looking down on this part with this half removed. And we call this a full section because we're cutting entirely through the part and removing half of the part. Once I remove this half, in this view, everything that was hidden before becomes a visible line. And now I can dimension to those features. So drafters have to make this decision when they're faced with this drawing that has a bunch of interior feature and everything is showing up as hidden. Here's another type of uh, section view called a half section. And I want you to look at the cutting plane line in the half section. In the cutting plane line, we come straight across, go straight up, and then here's the direction of the arrow. So we're standing here looking in the direction of the arrow, but this area of the view has been removed, which means that in our front view now, everything above the cutting plane line is a section view. And whenever we have a section view, we add a hatch pattern inside the areas where uh, that, that the blade of, you know, if we think of an imaginary blade that cuts through a part, where that blade uh, rubs against metal or whatever it is we're cutting away, we're going to add a hatch pattern. We actually call that hatch pattern section lines. So this is an example of a half section. Whenever we're ready to put the hatch pattern in, we pick the hatch icon. Now, this is found on the draw toolbar or on the draw panel of the home tab of the ribbon. And uh, there are some videos that will show you how, uh, when you start to draw the assignment, and in the videos, we'll come back to the hatch pattern uh, and the hatch command. When you click on the hatch icon, your ribbon is going to change 
and it's going to turn into the hatch ribbon and there are some things on there that you'll deal with for example like picking the points that's the area for example we go back one that would be picking inside here and picking inside here so that the pattern would be placed inside those areas um, the swatch is what your pattern looks like and if you pick on the down arrow right here you have a bunch of different patterns you can choose ANSI 31 is the standard 45 degree uh, angle uh, you can also change that angle you can change the scale and what the scale does it let me go back one if I change the scale it will change the distance between these lines here now that angle of ANSI 31 is already set at 45 degrees so you don't need to go in here and change the angle to 45 in order to get it to look like this the first assignment that you're going to come across in chapter 8 is where we take the tool holder drawing that we've already created and we open it up and we create two new layers one called cutting plane and we set the line type on that to dashed x2 and we set the line weight of that line to 0.6 millimeters so we're going to get a, a heavy dash line the hatch pattern we're going to use in here is uh, we're going to make a layer called hatch pattern we're going to set it to continuous and set the default line weight to it so this is how we convert the tool holder to a section view we run a cutting plane line through the top view and remember we're drawing this on the cutting plane layer and we're going to add some arrows to that, that pointing up to show uh, you know which direction we're viewing the view from so we would imagine that we're behind the cutting plane line looking straight up we've removed this half of the view and now this line which before was a hidden line because it is behind this edge here will be a visible line this hole which lies on the cutting plane line is going to go all the way through those won't be hidden lines anymore and we'll use a hatch pattern to add a hatch pattern into these two areas so that's how we would do uh, the tool holder and turn it into a full section project 8.2 though is the one that you're going to be doing for a grade and um, this is what the project looks like you're going to draw the front view of this thing called the flange bearing and you're going to draw a top view of it and the top view is going to be a full section you're going to also dimension it so you're going to have to create a dimension style that you can name and ASMEY 14.5 and these are the settings for your text height the narrow sizes and so on like this and this image here will sort of help you visualize what what the section view is going to look like here we have a, uh, a model of what the flange bearing looks like so that you can see what these holes look like that go through it there is a countersunk hole that goes through right here and there are two counter board holes right here and these are the dimensions that you would need to draw those uh, you don't put these dimensions on your drawing you'll add this note and this note to the drawing and uh, there's a help sheet in Blackboard that actually shows you this view this same image right here that you can refer to and you'll find that in the steps of Blackboard for drawing the flange bearing in chapter 8 the finished drawing will look like this you'll have a front view and a top view you'll add all of your dimensions including the notes here we've got the note for the countersunk hole the note for the counter board hole you can see here's the counter board hole here's the counter sunk hole um, the construction for these two views is gone into in detail in the video that's available in the chapter 8 blackboard when you add annotation to the counter board hole you want the annotation to look like this and there are steps that you're going to follow step one step two step three and the same goes for the counter sunk hole which is over here and we have placed a help sheet uh, in blackboard 
in the area of the step where it shows about dimensioning and this will guide you to this handout right here but this is also in your book and it shows you how to add these lines of text essentially what you're going to do is use the diameter tool that you use in, in dimensioning and point to one of the circles that you have and then edit the text so that you wind up with three lines of text that says diameter 0.75 then a lowercase v with a 1 and a lowercase x with a 0.125 you're going to continue to edit that text and add a diameter before the 1 in this view then what you're going to do is highlight the lowercase v and go to your text editor pick on the down arrow and change the lowercase v from Arial to GDT and when you do that uh, this is going to change to the counter bore symbol then you're going to highlight the X and change it to GDNT and the X will change to the depth symbol and I want to remind you something these have to be lowercase or this is not going to work so this is what we want that to look like when it's done right so the same holds true for when we annotate the counter sunk hole we just use the diameter symbol and put a diameter to the larger diameter that we've got here on our front view and then we're going to double click on the text and edit the text to add a second line of text with a w a, a lowercase w a diameter uh, a capital x and a 82 degrees and then we're going to highlight the W and change it from Arial to GDNT font. So when we're finished and we have all the dimensions on there, your view will look something like this here. And uh, that will complete the work for the section view. If you have any questions, uh, contact your instructor. Thanks.